Hey, good morning. Happy Monday. Dr. Robin McKay here. Welcome to your weekly weather report. It is Monday, October 24th, 2022. And if you are here with me live in the actualization zone, be sure to say hello. And if you're watching the recording, say hello too, so I can come back in and say hi back to you. Before we get started with this week's weather report, I've got a couple of announcements of things that I've got coming up that are really exciting and possibly right up your alley. One is that this Saturday and Sunday, the 29th and 30th of October, I am teaching the Soul Journeys Method Akashic Records Level 1 Certification Program. And in that program, I'm going to teach you how to access, open, read, and interpret your own Akashic records, which can lead to all kinds of really wonderful experiences and transformations, as I've experienced in my own life and many, many of my clients as, have as well. In fact, the Akashic records for me is my go-to transformational, I'll call, I'm going to call it a tool, but it's so much more than that. Um, that I use in every single session that I ever do and that I have seen create miracles in my own life and in the lives of the people that I work with. Um, the people who are coming into the Akashic Records Level 1 training are intuitive. They're also very bright and talented. They're from all different professions. So some of them are spiritual entrepreneurs and transformational coaches. Some of them are coming out of the corporate space, um, science, engineering, medicine. Some of them are like me who are coming out of psychology and counseling, but all of us are coming together because we have this deep desire to know as much as we possibly can from our own inner source of wisdom, which is where the Akashic records are located actually is inside of you. So if that's something that is kind of sparking your interest, you can go to drrobinmckay.com forward slash ARC and then the number one and find out all of the information. That's the enrollment page. And I will see you in class. And then let's see, what else do we have? I have opened up some spots to work with me privately for the rest of this year. These are spots where we will be working on elevating your wealth consciousness. So I've received some codes from the Akashic records that are actually wealth codes that create the, the capacity to hold more, to receive more abundance, and just generally to feel better about your relationship with money. There are so many miracles. I know I'm using this word a lot, but there it's undescribable any other way, the miracles that happen when you expand your capacity to receive and hold more money in your business, in your work, and so on. So if you've had some nigglies about money, making more money, if you've hit a, a glass ceiling at work or in your business, one of those sessions, one of those programs might be right for you. They're priced really beautifully. They're mini coaching packages. There are three sessions that go along with those, and we have them priced at $9.97. So that's a really, usually it's a couple thousand dollars an hour to work with me privately. So I'm doing this for new clients, for new customers who are coming into my business and who want to work on wealth consciousness and also know that they're meant to work with me. If one of those wealth consciousness mini coaching packages is for, for you, I want you to direct message me. You can do that in Facebook or you can also email me at Robin, R-O-B-Y-N at drrobinmckay.com. And let me know that you're interested in learning more about that wealth consciousness mini coaching package. And I will look forward to working with you to expanding your own wealth consciousness. Now, on with the show. All right. So if you are new to my world, uh, what you need to know is that I have a background in psychology. I have a PhD in counseling psychology, and I have come to understand that working in the Akashic records, working in the depths of consciousness that's required for transformation takes a little bit more than what I was using when I was, when I was training as a clinician. And um, so I have found a way to really integrate my natural abilities as an intuitive. I'm a clear channel. I've been a clear channel since I was a little kid. And 
I, of course, integrate that with all of the wisdom and experiences that I've gathered over this over this life I've been living. And I work with my non-physical guides. Um, I'm Catholic by birth. And so I have some of my Catholic guides with us as well as some other non-physical benevolent beings who work with me as well. So I always tune into them before we start the weather report. And the weather report, as you might be guessing, is not about our physical weather. It is about the non-physical energies. Um, anything that's coming in this week that can be helpful, that we can harness, anything we need to pay attention to as we continue our journey to actualizing our greatest hopes, dreams, and desires. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and get started. And I will say this, that what I've noticed about the energies coming in this week is that there's a lot, there are like these waves of really exciting, positive energy. I was talking with one of my colleagues last night. She's a Philadelphia Phillies supporter. And I'm a Yankees. I'm a Yankees fan. So we had a we had a bad run during the during the baseball playoffs. But um, I was talking to her and she was so excited. The Phillies are going to be in the World Series. And I was thinking about the energy that's associated even with something like the World Series, or if you're, if you're international, maybe it's like the World Cup or something like that for, for football. But whatever it is, when a bunch of people get together, and they're focused and excited about a single event, in this case, the World Series. We actually, whether we like the Philadelphia Phillies or not, or even know anything about them or any other team that's playing in any other major sporting event, we can actually tap into the consciousness, tap into the energies that are available that have been created just by virtue of how many people are paying attention and how many people are excited and anticipating what's to come. And so rather than, rather than observing and thinking it has nothing to do with you, it has actually everything to do with you because everything is energy and energy is neutral, meaning that it doesn't, it's not attached to who accesses it, in other words. So if you want to have an extra pop of energy this week for yourself, if you, if you need some extra focus, if you need some extra some extra enthusiasm about what you are bringing to life this week, tap into the energy, tap into the energy of, of that sporting event and see what happens. Just feel into the excitement, feel into the anticipation and mimic that and bring that into your own experience as well. And by mimic, I don't mean copycat it. I just mean use that to infuse your own projects your own consciousness with the energy of enthusiasm. It's energy is contagious. And so a world event, uh, actually a national event, I won't call it a world event, but a national event like the World Series can be a great place to tap into for extra energy. So try that this week. And then I used, so last night when I was tuning in, I have an app for Colette Baron reads Spirit Animal Oracle, which I've used before. But um, there were three cards that came forward. The first one, this is, um, let me read what this is. This is about what are the energies that are at play this week. And the first card that came forward was Panther Spirit. I don't know if you can see that. There's Panther. And Panther is here to remind us to reclaim our power. But it's also here to remind us that we need to reset our relationship with power. Because here's the thing, is that for many, many people, we have um, an inverted relationship with power. We, it's almost like we're afraid of our own power. I think Marianne Williamson maybe once said that it's not other people who are afraid of our power, we're afraid of our own power. I paraphrased, but you get the point. So if you've got a wonky relationship with your own sense of personal power, with your own sense of confidence, with your own sense of I'm all in, I'm going for it, no holds barred. If you've got some, some wonkiness or some wobbliness about that, this is the week to start really transforming that and developing a friendly relationship with power because your power, that your source of power, your central power is your connection with divine source energy, with God. 
And so we want to just use this week to move through any wobbliness, any, any one of my colleagues calls them nigglies, any nigglies that we might have about our relationship with power and really step into our full creative potential, our full power. So that's part of the energy. And then let's see what else. What else do they have to say this week? Oh, and the next one is one of my favorites, horse spirit. Horse spirit represents freedom. And when I think about the relationship between power and freedom, what ends up happening is that I think, well, if I have all my personal power, then I'm free. So you can also have a misapplied and misidentified relationship with freedom and what it means to be free. We all crave freedom on some level. We all intuitively know that we are meant to be free. And yet we often are held bound by our relationship with time, our relationship with work, our duties, responsibilities, and obligations. So this is a good week to just ask yourself and to live out, live in the question of what's the best way for me to express my sense of freedom this week? How can I, how can I show myself that I'm even more free than I had originally thought? It's always good to, to live in the question on these things. Your, into, your intellect is going to want to know the answer right away. But the intuition, the unconscious works differently than that. So when you live in the question of how can I express my freedom? What is the feeling of freedom for me? What does that feel like in my body? You don't have to know the answer. You can just be in curiosity about it and discover what it feels like to be even more free, even more expansive, even more of who you really are. And that, by the way, going back to the wealth consciousness mini coaching package that I'm packages that I'm offering this month and probably into next month as well. Um, the, that sense of freedom is very much associated with wealth consciousness. And wealth consciousness, of course, is not just about money, although that is a part of it. Financial freedom is a part of wealth consciousness, but it's about being conscious of the abundance that is not just available to us, but within us, around us, and to take, to take ownership of that abundance around it. Like it doesn't belong to somebody else. It belongs to me. And some people might Look at that in a selfish, through a selfish lens. And if that's the case, then, you know, maybe, maybe this isn't the conversation that you and I need to be having. But if you're really looking at it as, you know, just in terms of the, the things that they say on the airplanes, when you put your own oxygen mask on first, when you really own your own wealth consciousness, when you really live an abundant life, that only helps other people. It only creates more opportunities for other people to rise up in their own abundance and wealth consciousness as well. So think about horse spirit this week as you're moving through the week and just asking horse, horse, help me create more, more freedom. Help me create more opportunities to feel free. And then um, this card is about, this is koi fish spirit. And Koi is a, is a reminder that there's always enough. And I love this reading because last night when I was when I was pulling these cards, the guides were saying that since I'm being focused really on wealth consciousness for the foreseeable future in terms of what I'm going to be talking about, what they're talking to me about as well, uh, one of the things that we're going to bump up against is the opposite. It's a law of polarity. When we talk about wealth consciousness, we're going to bump up against what? Scarcity consciousness. And so the koi fish is here to remind us that there is always enough. There's always plenty. And if you happen to be on the pole that would say that there's never enough, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough energy, I don't have enough money, whatever it is, we have to understand and activate the sacred law of repetition, or sorry, the sacred law of polarity, which just basically states that everything is on a pole. There is an opposite. So if you happen to be focusing on the lack side of the pole, there's a shift in perspective, a shift in frequency that's needed in order for you to start seeing the abundance because it has to be there. They're two sides of the same coin. 
So again, this is a really good week to start looking at where am I experiencing scarcity consciousness? And that can be with anything. It can be with, of course, with money, but it can be, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough energy. I'm tired all the time. Anywhere where you're thinking or feeling, I don't have enough, or you're wishing for something, but you're not allowing yourself to have it. That's another form of of scarcity consciousness. When I want something, but I'm not gonna allow myself to have it, I'm making myself wait or be patient for a long time before I allow myself to receive something that I very much want for myself. That could be a relationship. It could be a pair of new shoes. I don't know what it is for you, but anything where you are not allowing yourself to receive the abundance that is available to you. It can even be, I'm out of breath. I'm out of breath. So many of us breathe this shallow breath pattern where we're only filling up about 25% of our lung capacity. So our bodies are being starved of oxygen. So if you want a really good wealth consciousness practice, start with your breath and take a really big, deep breath and allow the oxygen to saturate your system. And when you do that, you actually start to feel better. Your perspective shifts out of scarcity, out of lack, out of panic, out of, out of fear, and it shifts into relaxation. Your shoulders drop down. This is, a, this is a wealth consciousness practice. Breathing is a wealth consciousness practice, but it's gotta be conscious breathing. It's gotta be deep breathing. It's gotta be mindful breathing. Giving yourself enough oxygen is the first thing that you can do to increase your wealth consciousness. So try it out. Okay, so that's the, that's the weather report for the week. And let me see if there's anything else that they want to tie in this week. Um, we are approaching the end of October, which is All Saints Day. It's Halloween. It's Samhain. Um, the veils between the worlds are very thin right now. So this is a really wonderful time of transformation, of being able to come into conscious contact with your own highest self, your, your conscious connection with divine source energy, and to really leveraging this, this um, energy and this time to tune into what is really meant to be created, what you're really meant to create in your life. I think that those are a good place to start this week. So if the, you found this helpful, please share this with your network, take a screenshot, tag me in it so I can say thanks and see what you're saying about it. And uh, let me know in the comments, what was your number one takeaway from today's, today's weather report? I'm going to be back all week with new information on wealth consciousness, some training on the psychology of women making money and things like that. So stay tuned in the actualization zone. And by the way, if you're not a member of the actualization zone and you're watching this on YouTube, check us out. We're over on Facebook. Just type into the search bar, the actualization zone, the, the Facebook group will pop right up and you are welcome to join us. If you are an intelligent and intuitive leader who's ready to create a new world for yourself and for other people. Until next time.